come in. Just, yeah, come on in. Normally I'd get off the couch to greet you, but I've been here for three days and I don't plan on getting up. <laughs> oh, thank you. You are so sweet to come by with soup. I am due for some real food. <laughs> no, I still can't taste anything, but my memories of hot noodles and broth will definitely fill in the blanks. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It was very kind of you to offer, and I am certainly going to take you up on it. Stay back, though. I don't want you getting sick. I would feel so bad. <laughs> oh, isn't that the best thing ever? <laughs> Trapped on the couch in a big, fluffy blanket and the sweetest person ever drives across town to bring me get well soup. Oh. No one has ever brought you soup before when you're sick? Oh, well, I'll bring you soup. But don't get sick from me. That would be a conflict of interest. Oh, you know, I'm feeling a lot better. It's mostly been annoying because life goes on, you know, and I can hear it, people out and about, but I'm stuck here. <laughs> well, I tried to catch up on some shows, but I mostly just fell asleep. So, what have you been up to while I've been wasting away? You've been talking to someone? Why does that make me feel so weird? They're allowed to talk to people. That's great they're talking to people. That's exciting. They better be nice to you. <sighs> oh, they're really sweet. Good. You deserve someone who is sweet to you. You have a date tonight? A date? Tonight with some stranger? I don't know about that. They don't even know you. They don't know what food you like or where your favorite restaurant is. That is awesome. Well, you're kind of nervous. You wouldn't be nervous if you were just hanging out with me. We never make each other nervous. Well... Who doesn't get nervous on the first date? That's a good sign. It probably means you're excited. Or you're nervous because deep down, you don't really want to go. What are you doing, cat? This is good news. So why don't you feel happy for them? Maybe you're just feeling protective. Or maybe you're feeling selfish. It's good for them to meet more people. They want to date somebody and they're not going to date you. Right? They wouldn't want to date you. That would be crazy. I don't, I don't think they like me like that. And you don't like them like that. Well, you like them, but... Huh? Oh, oh, I'm just out of it. You know how head colds make you all. Woo! So, um, tell me more about the date. Why? What are you nervous about? You're cute. You're fun to be around. You have great insights. You always make me smile. And I'm sure they'll notice all of that. Well, with them. Not that they'll notice you do all those things to me. <laughs> Not do things to me. Make me feel those things. I'm, I'm sure you'll make them feel lots of things. Um, what are you saying? Never mind, that didn't make any sense. So you're nervous because you're worried about getting trapped again? Oh, because everyone starts out nice. And then once you start to really like them, they totally change. A lot of people are like that. It's not always going to be obvious 
because some people are very good at manipulating others. But even if it's not obvious, if you can recognize the patterns, you'll get good at it. It's kind of like identifying poisonous snakes. If red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. Red touches black, you're okay, Jack. Or is it the other way? Oh no. Uh, Red, yellow, dead fellow, red, black, dead Jack. Which one is it? Red, black is safe. Okay, (laughs) see, this is why we need good friends. You're saving lives out here. Oh, sure, I can think of some. There's some really common things manipulative people do. If they insist on talking to you alone, and especially when the timing is bad, so you're caught off guard. Because then you're more likely to agree with them just to get out of the situation and feel safe again. So they'll make sure to corner you when you're alone. It doesn't have to be a physical thing, but emotional pressure like that is really powerful. Like they may not be, you know, holding you in a corner, but if they're standing in your way or they're talking to you and you're alone, it can feel a lot like getting cornered for sure. And if you're alone, there's no one to corroborate your story, so they can just deny it later if they want to. And if someone else was there, they would hopefully speak up and say the person emotionally ambushing you like that is way out of line. Also, demanding an answer from you right then before you can leave. Salespeople do this a lot. It's a common tactic. That's not good because if something is good for you, the more you look into it, the better it seems. And if something is bad, the more you think about it, the worse it seems. And they don't want you to use your natural reasoning to choose what's good for you. They want you to choose what's good for them. If someone tries to start an upsetting or emotional conversation in public, so you'll be overwhelmed and uncomfortable and just agree with whatever they say to get it over with, that's also bad. (laughs) And if you say, let's have this conversation at a more appropriate time and place, and they insist on having it right then, red flag. (laughs) Again, they're only considering their own needs and not yours. I've seen parents do this a lot to manipulate their kids, actually. Um, Also, something people do is they're really vague. If you ask them what's wrong and they say, you know what I'm talking about and don't pretend like you don't know, but they're not they're not actually telling you what it is. And then if you are trying to ask clarifying questions and they say, I'm not getting into this or I'm not doing this with you, it's all really vague because they just want you to feel bad. They don't want to address an actual issue because if the issue is solved, then they can't be mad at you anymore. Uh, Also, oh, there's something called moving the goalposts. That's a super common one. Every time you reach a solution, they will change the rules because they don't actually want the solution. They don't want it to resolve. A lot of people in relationships will use this one to avoid addressing the real issue. So let's say you want some intimacy and they say, well, they're too tired to cuddle. So, okay, well, what about earlier in the day? Well, no, they're too busy earlier in the day. Okay, well, what if they choose the time? Well, they say it's not the time. It's actually that they want you to wear this and look a certain way. And then they'll want to cuddle you, right? Okay, so you wear the thing they like. Oh, but now they say you're trying too hard. And if you try to address it and you're asking, do you just not want to cuddle with me? And then they're like, no, I do. I really do. I just, you know, I can't get into it unless we have 
the certain kind of blanket. So you get the blanket, but now it's too hot. So you see, every time you fulfill the criteria they made up, it changes again. So what's the real issue? Well, that's what you're supposed to talk and figure out. But if the other person keeps changing the goalposts and avoiding it, then you'll never get there. And this works really well because they're putting all of the blame on you. You are the one causing this. You're not doing enough. If you would just do better, it would work. It forever stays your fault. And they will keep using that to their advantage because that's the narrative they've created. And it's totally unfair. But once you, once you recognize it, it stops making you feel completely inadequate and you can just see that they're making up rules and changing them constantly. And that's not okay. Oh, and then along those lines, another one is changing the subject. So if someone's trying to manipulate you, changing the subject, great way to do it. Especially if the conversation is making them feel like they are in the wrong. So if you ask me, did I do meal prep for the week yet? Because I said I would do it. And let's say I hadn't. Let's say I watched a movie instead. But rather than being honest about that and admitting I let you down, I might say, well, did you water the plants? I have just introduced a completely different topic of conversation that has nothing to do with what we were talking about. You asked me a simple question about my behavior and suddenly I flipped it and now you are on trial for something totally unrelated. It's supposed to catch you off guard because instead of a normal conversation, you are now suddenly defending yourself for no reason. (laughs) Manipulative people really try to throw you off because if you are being rational and they are not being rational, there is no way you can settle the argument. And they don't want to resolve it. They want to win. Usually by you giving up in frustration. If you keep trying to return to the initial conversation, you say, let's talk about the plants in a minute, but first, can we talk about the meal prep? And I say, oh, I guess that means you didn't water the plants. So again, completely ignoring you and your questions. Okay, and then outside of this scenario to us, it's obvious. That's not the way constructive conversations go. It's accusatory for no reason and weird. (laughs) But if you're the one trying to make it work, you might spend a lot of time trying to figure it out until you get frustrated and give up, which is what they wanted because they're trying to avoid responsibility and get what they want. But... I mean, you know, those are a few. There's a lot. There's more. (laughs) But anyways, I know you said you're still learning what good relationships look like or even what decent people look like. But unless you get kidnapped, which I won't let happen, because then how could I pay you back for the soup? (laughs) You're not going to accidentally fall into a bad relationship. You won't wake up one day and, oh no, it happened again. No, I promise. Maybe it seemed like that before. It felt like your partner was the greatest person ever. Then out of nowhere, they became a terrible, abusive jerk. But there were probably some major red flags in the beginning that you chose to ignore. If you were trained your entire life to ignore and enable bad behavior in your family, then it makes sense you do the exact same thing once you left your family. But you're learning that's not normal. 
and you don't have to do that anymore. I think you're going to have a ton of fun on your date. I think you are very perceptive. (laughs) And uh, if you want, you should tell me all about it. Thank you so much for the soup. It really means a lot. And I'm serious. The next time you get sick, I'm bringing you soup. Probably a movie. (laughs) Okay, yeah, I don't want to keep you, but, um... Thanks for swinging by. It was really good to see you. If I didn't know you had plans, I would... I would totally invite you to stay. Watch a movie, but... Well, on the other end of the couch, from a safe distance. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I'll see you later. I'll probably, I'll probably just go back to sleep. (laughs) Okay, bye.